past this coronavirus is going to go away at some point and we'll be back to life as we know it but in the meantime let's just make the best use of the time that we have at home let's you know bond with the family try and do fun stuff you know one of the things that I've tried to do this period is not to dwell on negative things or things that give me um, some sort of agitation or fear. I've just been trying to stay very positive, doing stuff with the kids, doing stuff with the family, and you know, uh, we're taking it one day at a time. So far, so good, right? Okay, so um, when I was growing up, my mom had two kids, just me and my sister, and we used to fight a lot. I mean, I would think that girls won't really fight that much, but my sister and I we fought quite a bit. You know, I was the younger one. I think I think maybe I was just too headstrong. I just wasn't ready to say, okay, it's your way of the highway, you know. So we used to fight a lot. And I remember my mom would just sometimes sit down and just start crying. Like, what is wrong with you girls? So I got to just stop fighting, you know. She would try to stop us and we'll keep fighting. And she would just sit down and be crying because she was a single parent and she was very young herself, you know, so she would cry all the time and we would just really fight a lot, you know. So now I'm a mom myself and I find that, you know, it's actually quite normal with kids. So that brings us to our topic of the day. Today we're talking about sibling rivalry. So, Guzzi, what is what do you think sibling rivalry is? Um, I think sibling rivalry is just like a, you can have like a sort of competition between uh, siblings or you can have uh, uh, animosity towards each other. That's basically what sibling rivalry is. I think mostly when people talk, when people use the word sibling rivalry, I think that most of the time they're actually re uh, referring to um, to animosity rather than just straight up competition. Because you know when people talk about sibling rivalry, I think I think a lot of times it's more of a negative thing, right? I don't think it's exactly positive all the time. Mm -hmm. And animosity is the negative side. Competition is the positive side. Okay, so yeah. so competition can be positive, right? Yeah. Well, competition is supposed to be positive, except when it becomes some sort of negative type of competition, where it becomes right. something else, not just healthy competition, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in my opinion, I think sibling rivalry is normal. Yeah. Course, yeah, because I mean, it happens. I don't know if there are any siblings in the world who don't have some sort of sibling rivalry or. Yeah, you know, that, I, that would that would just be weird. That, like, <laughs> you know, like imagine if you just um you just walk into the house, you see all the siblings and everything, and just like you know, every time he says something, just like, mm, okay, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue about that, I'm not gonna fight. <laughs> you know, we all have our different opinions, right? So like, uh, so at sometimes gonna clash with each other, mm -hmm. and we might so strongly disagree, even if, even on a petty level, mm -hmm. right? That we that we're not just gonna we're not just gonna get along. You know what I mean? So yeah, and people think that oh. Um, they may not um, like each other or whatever, but that, that's just not the case, you know, like it's just It's just that we disagree on something at the moment. That's why it happens right? But I find that it happens quite often like in a day I mean even with you guys and I mean when you were growing up it was a different ball, you know, like you guys used to fight Like you would fight so yeah. much. I would be running mad like can you guys just stop already what is this you know but i mean now you've sort of outgrown that fighting phase but you disagree all the time guys it's like every hour there's an argument there's a disagreement there's, and i i know that it's normal i know that in the next 10 20 minutes you guys are forgotten about that 
disagreements and you guys are cool again and you're checking out each other's game or whatever right, right. but at that moment when you guys are at each other's throats and quarreling and it just really gets to me you know so i think that one of the things um to note as parents is that it's normal and it quickly passes i mean it's 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 abnormal when there's a disagreement or animosity amongst uh, siblings and it goes on for days then you know there's a problem i think as parents we should realize that it's normal and just almost sort of stay away from it on unless it gets um um unless it gets sort of deeper yeah, yeah you know what i mean yeah. so when it gets to a stage where it's becoming a major struggle if it's becoming a real fight or a real quarrel that's when i think as parents we can step in because yeah, really like if you have um like let's say um you know the uh two kids are like quarreling or everything like they're just uh competing with each other you know what i mean like they could be competing in sports or things like that but i mean they could sometimes compete with each other so hard that they actually don't want to see each other succeed you know what i mean so they could actually like do things like actually actively be doing things to make sure this other person doesn't succeed mm -hmm. not even just in that area but in other areas as well just because they're mad at them for a certain thing and that's when it gets like it gets really bad you okay know? You that, that, that's when that. it's that's when it's really negative yeah. you know so if your if your kids are um have uh, having a go at each other yeah. and then it gets to the point where they're actually like you said actively doing stuff to make sure the other person doesn't succeed then you know there's a problem and you need to step in because i know of some adults that had issues growing up and they've grown up and they don't even talk to themselves. They're siblings, they don't talk to themselves, they don't see themselves. I feel like their parents failed them. I honestly feel like their parents failed them because some of these things can be checked. They really can be checked, you know. So when it gets to that point where you notice that the kids are, uh, it's no more just the normal sibling rivalry where they're quarreling and the next five, 10 minutes they're gisting and watching a movie together and talking and all that, you know, okay, now I need to step in and put a stop to this. I need to make them remember that they are blood. I need to make them remember that they're from, from the same family and, and family must always stick together. Family was, must, al must always love ourselves. I always say to my kids, I say, if the world might go against you, but your family will always have your back. Your family will always stick with you so i say to them make sure you always have your brother's back no matter what you know when you're out there it's your brother first before anyone else you know so we as parents we have a duty to make sure that our kids get along yes they will have the normal sibling rivalry but we have to make sure that it doesn't go beyond that and this is very important in this season obviously yeah. because we're all at home yeah, you know so yeah, yeah we're, we're in the same space all the time it's not like oh i can get upset with you and i'm like you know what i'm not gonna play with you i'm just gonna go outside to play basketball i'm just you know what i'm just gonna go to the to the food, football field because you're annoying me right now let me go play football there's nothing like that you're in the same house together so you know so it can be very challenging um in this season so because you, have you noticed that there is more um, rivalry amongst you and your brothers this period, or are you guys are really getting along. Um, we're actually getting along. There is actually um, so it's like it's go it goes both ways actually. You know we have um, a lot more rivalry going on, but at the same time we're getting along a lot more because you know we just get to see each other more, and we're all not like dry people. You know we always like hype and stuff, so you know like we just actually just get along a lot. Okay. Um, apart from that, so yeah, that's actually going pretty well, and uh, yeah with the. Uh, with quarantine, a lot of people are stuck together. So whatever problems they're gonna have, they're just gonna stay there. And you know, if they really have this huge problem with somebody, just get to have to see that person's face every single day, right? Yeah. It's just like, oh man, why did like, you know what I mean? When usually, you know, you could just go, you could talk to friends or something, and then you could come back, forget about the whole thing, right? But mm -hmm. this time, it's it's a lot different, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Guzzi, what do you think causes sibling rivalry? Um, so you can think about it like this, like, um, in the real world, like, you know, let's say in the business world or anything like that or sports or whatever, you know, people always have to, you know, try and do their best to rise to the top so they can get certain privileges. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they're just ruthless in it. Like most people, you know, they, um, they will do whatever they, whatever they can or whatever is available, whatever options are available to get what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with siblings at home, you know, siblings, 
the reason why they have rivalries with each other is that a lot of times they could also feel like there's a lot of favoritism going on in the household. You know, parents favor one sibling over the other. And, you know, they want more attention from their parents so they can get certain things, right? Mm -hmm. So when they see that the other sibling is getting more, is getting more than they are, they start to get, um, they start to become antagonistic towards that sibling, which is what causes them to always fight all the time and things like that, right? And you know, if somebody agitates, is agitated by this person and expresses their anger towards this person and just starts fighting them all the time, the other person is gonna get irritated that they're being fought by this person and then they're just gonna start quarreling and fighting all the time. That's basically what causes sibling, sibling rivalry. Okay, yeah. that's, that's, I couldn't have put it better. Yeah. Also, um, most times when there is a new kid, yeah. You know, so a child, okay, so let's say you have a, a, a first child, like there was Toby, right? And Toby was the first child mm -hmm. and he was used to just being him. So it's just Toby and I and daddy, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, mom is pregnant and then Gossy comes, yeah, right? I, I, don't know, I don't know what that's like though, you know, having rivalry because of a new kid. Because by the time any of the new kids came in for any of us, we were too young to even care about any of those um, like we, like, I'm not saying we're too young to yeah. care, but I'm just saying like, we didn't, I don't remember, okay, I don't remember what that was that's like. That's what you would okay, say. Okay, that's what I should say. <laughs> what I should say is that remember. I don't remember what yeah. that was like to have any rivalry between us. But yeah. I mean, you guys showed us videos when we were kids. I mean, from what I saw and when I was born, right, mm -hmm. Tobe was just like super nice to me and stuff. Okay, I like so wanted to fight me. Honestly, and that's and true. Like that. But that's so, so here's, I, so I understood that there would there is normally sibling rivalry, right? So which is what one of the things I wanted to talk about. So when there's a new kid coming, what you as a parent should do is prepare the existing child for the arrival of the new child. So what I used to do even with Toby, when I was pregnant, was I was like, oh Toby, uh, mommy's baby, come and pray for the baby, come and do all of those things. So Toby, Toby was always by my tummy. Right, so he was always praying for the baby. He was always touching the baby. Well, oh, the baby's moving. Toby, come and touch the baby. You know, Toby. I even had to watch birth stories with Toby because I knew Toby was gonna go with me for your delivery, because he because there was nobody to leave him with. You know, yeah. we didn't have any help, so I knew there was no way that I would have to go with Toby. So I needed to prepare him for the arrival of a baby, what it's like. So I would watch birth stories with him and explain to him, even though he was quite young himself, but I explained to him. So he understood that there was a baby coming and the baby that was coming was someone to love and cherish. So that's what that's one of the things that parents should make sure that they do. So you always make sure that the child, the existing child on the, or the existing children understand that the new child is, is a new, is a gift. It's someone that you love and someone that you cherish, so that it's someone that you play with. So not to say that there won't be sibling rivalry, there will be. Because when that new child starts to get to the stage where he can now play with toys, it now becomes a problem because it's like, this is my toy, it's mine, mine, you know, because you're used to everything being yours and then a new child comes and wants to share. It's like, no, it's mine. Why do you want, why do you want to have it? Yeah, you know? um, and that also, also what you were saying before about preparing the parents, right? Uh, the parents preparing the kids mm -hmm. uh, for the new uh, baby that's coming along. That can actually also be important because, you know, they won't have, you know, some people can just like dislike someone, yeah. right? For like all the time and they wouldn't even know why. Like, okay, they could just dislike this sibling their entire life. So anything that just happens, they just have this lingering dislike for this person, right? Mm -hmm. This lingering hatred for this, uh, for their sibling. Mm -hmm. And what can cause that obviously is that um, they they now feel like that other kid has been getting uh, more attention than they are yep. because you know the kid was just born, right? Yep. So then throughout their life, their the, their hatred for the sibling just starts building and building and yep. building until yep. it just gets really, really bad. Yep. So yeah, that's so, so, so you're, you're absolutely right. Parents need to be very careful of that because one of the things that can happen, like Gozi has said, is when a child feels like all the attention has been taken away from me. And it's very easy to fall into that trap because when a new baby comes, most times we give the new baby all the attention and then we forget the other child. You know, so it's it's something that you parents have to be very careful about because if you don't make them integrate from the start, it can get to a point where the existing child just feels like, you know what, that's it, 
or as soon as this person came into our lives, my life changed forever. As soon as this person came, I didn't get any more attention from my parents. If I want something, they don't give it to me. If I want their time, they're like, oh, can't you see that the baby's crying? Or, oh, can't you see I'm with the baby? Oh, I'm feeding the baby. Or, oh, oh go. and then they keep, they now start sending the child on all these errands all the time, all these little chores, like, oh, go get the baby's diapers, go get the baby's milk, go get the baby's clothes, go get, and so it's like, everything is about the baby. You're giving the baby all the time. You're making me work for the baby. You're just, everything's about the baby. I don't want this baby. I don't like this baby because this baby came and took and took over my life pretty much. You know, so parents need to be very, very careful with that. So yes, there's sibling rivalry. Many times when a new baby arrives, you know, um, there's sibling rivalry when kids feel like they're not getting enough attention. Even, even after the whole new baby phase, you know, when kids have gotten to maybe their early teens or, you know, those age, the age where they feel like there's some sort of favoritism. Like, this, my parent likes this child more. Maybe a particular child is doing better in school and you just start favoring that child that's doing better in school. And it's like, oh, oh, I'm buying you a bicycle because you came first. And the one who came 20th is there like, okay, so because I didn't come first, I don't get a bicycle. You know, so there are certain things that we need to really watch as parents because they can cause damage that might linger on for years you know so we need to make sure that if even when kids are having those um quarrels and fights and all of that and you want to discipline them we need to be sure that we're not favoring one child over the other if if they fight discipline both of them for fighting equally you know so it's not like oh don't you know he's your younger brother why would you be i mean every parent is guilty of that even i am i'm not going to sit here and just lie and say that i'm not every parent is guilty of that where you feel like the older one should be more responsible you should know better this is your younger brother why are you treating him like this you know so it can make a child start to be resentful so we need to be very 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 careful with that so gozi what are some of the ways that you, as a as a child, um, have been able to sort of quell um, disputes or like animosity towards your brothers? Like, because we're all human, you know. And every once in a while, we'll feel a pang of jealousy or a tinge of jealousy or something. You know, how do you safeguard yourself from feeling really badly about someone and going into a dark place that you don't want to go? Oh uh, well, I just think about the. Um the end result pretty much like if i if i get too angry at this person i'm going to be punished eventually you know if we're if i'm with my if we're with my siblings right so i just i just tell them like hey hey like if they're about if we're about to do something crazy i'm just like okay hey like let's just not do that you know we're, we're all gonna get in trouble so let's not do that um, and that's what i tell myself too i'm like okay if i start getting too angry and i do something stupid like i'm just gonna get in trouble so there's no problem I just let it go and let's just all live in peace you know that's that's basically how i do it like i i know I, you're probably looking at for, for some deep answer or whatever i'll just like that's just all i do like that's that's the reason i'm just like okay i can't i can't do that like, so, so that's pretty much it yeah. so if you didn't think you were going to get in trouble You'll be okay to just fight. I mean, I mean, think about it. that's how everybody is, right? Like you, you don't, you, you can't if if there's. Okay, look, you say that if I don't think I can get in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. But since I know that there's always a possibility I could get in trouble if somebody found out somehow. That that's why fought. that's that I thought. That's why that's why I would just not do it, right? Okay. That's, that's what I'm doing. Like. I could I could actually be in that situation where it looks like no one could possibly know I just did this right, mm -hmm. but I'm always thinking that there might be a little bit of a chance right there, like you no, know, just like a teeny little point something percent chance, right? <laughs> that I might just get in trouble. I'm just like, nah, I can't do that. No. Okay. So so what you're saying, I'm going back to what you're saying, yeah. is that the only reason you you just sort of quell or sort of discard the animosity or the bitterness or anger whatever you feel towards your brothers for anything is because you're going to get in trouble 
Well, I mean, that's you know, your only reason. Okay, so it's not because okay. and and okay. and it's because <laughs> I just I just don't I just don't want like to be fighting people all the time because I just like I just like to chill. You know what I mean? I don't like to be always having to shout at one person or always throwing punches or whatever. Like I don't I don't like to do that. I always I always tell my friends at school so I'm like I, I don't like to fight people, man. You know, people are talking about oh you want to fight this person, want to fight that person. I'm like no, I won't do anything. Even if someone does offend me, like. I just let it go because I just don't like doing it. You know what I mean? So I don't like. You're not a confrontational person. Yeah. I I'm not. get it because that's how I am. I'm not. I don't like confrontations. Like you know, it's there's no point. Like, you know, you know, I have to, I have to control myself too. Like, cause like, I don't. Com I'm not confrontational in terms of fighting, but in terms of talking, like you know. <laughs> If somebody if somebody says something that that that, that just like you know I'll just be about to I'll just be about to walk away you know I'm just like okay okay this person said this stuff I don't know once they just say that one word it just tickles I'm like mm, what did uh, so, yeah, and I just come back, come back I just come back with this like with the heat you know I just say something crazy right yeah but I sometimes you know I have to control myself you mm. know when it comes to the siblings most especially I mean people outside not as much but yeah I have to control myself. Okay, yeah. so because you're always in the same space, so you need to respect the fact that we live together There is no need to always have some sort of animosity towards ourselves because yeah. it's better to live in peace Than to constantly be quarreling and fighting. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay um, So what advice do you have for parents who? Um, are raising multiple kids, mm -hmm. you know, how do they make sure that there is not too much sibling rivalry and it doesn't get out of hand well, you know, um, I can put it for example that if we all get our presents on Christmas mm -hmm. and this other kid doesn't get what he wants, right? But the other, the reason why the other kid actually gets what he wants is because he's doing better in school, right? And some of these kids might actually not really get it, you know what I mean? That and might actually start to think that, oh, this, this parent likes the other sibling more because this sibling is doing better in school, mm -hmm. right? But you have to let the kids know that I don't like this, this kid more because he's doing better in school. I just want you to do better in school. And in order to get you to do better in school, you, you, I have to get, I have to, there has to be a reward because people always do something because there's an end reward, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to let them know that, okay, the reason why you didn't get what you wanted was because you didn't do well in school. You didn't do what we wanted you to do, right? It has nothing to do. We don't like this kid more because he did better in school. We're just giving him the reward because this is what we promised and we don't go back on our word, right? So that's the, that's, yeah, that's how you Great, great, great. So parents need to explain to the kids and make them understand yeah. when they're doing it. Book smart is great, but if a kid is not very book smart, it's not the end of the world. The truth is, in today's world, there are billionaires who've made money from all sorts of things legally that were not necessarily very book smart. That's not to say that we shouldn't encourage our kids to be, to be book smart. It's, it's a great thing to be book smart, but we're not gonna kill them if they just don't get it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we want you guys to get it. I'm not saying that we don't. We want you guys to get it. We want you guys to be top of your class. Every parent wants to have the bragging rights of kids who are at the top of their classes. But, um, so we need to not punish unduly kids who are not doing as well as other kids because that can cause major sibling rivalry. So it's almost as if, oh, so because I am not sm smart or I'm not as smart, as this child that's why i'm not getting all the love or all the attention so parents need to be very 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 careful with that so um we as parents we have to make sure that when we're punishing kids especially when there's been a squabble there's been a fight there's been uh, some sort of scuffle or whatever we should always make sure that we're not playing the blame game so we have to sort of try and punish equally if the kids went into a fight or the squabble or whatever and you want to punish even when you know that this person is to blame still try to punish equally yes later you can call them aside and say i i, I know that you started that fight you shouldn't be doing stuff like that but when you're punishing just punish, because they fought regardless so the, the the one who didn't start the fight should have walked away from the fight but he didn't or she didn't so you're going to have to punish them 
equally for that fight. Don't play the blame game, at least not publicly, you know, so we have to be very careful with that. And then another thing is remember to remain calm. My mom used to cry. <laughs> like she wasn't calm at all. She wasn't calm. Well, I guess in the way that's some sort of calmness, right? Yeah, <laughs> like <I guess>. she, <laughs> she wasn't like trying to, you know, come up all in her business or whatever. But she would just sit down somewhere and just be like, oh my god, these two girls are at it again, you know? So but we have to remember to remain calm in the situation, not stoop to the level of our kids. I mean, even when they're being petty and you know they're going at each other, we can't you know become petty like that you have to be calm you have to you have to be objective you have to you know handle the situation like the adults and not going there screaming and you know beating and all you know it just we just have to remember to be calm because the kids are watching you know and we, we we sometimes forget as parents that they're watching us but they are watching us and they're learning and they're going to reproduce what they're learning and if you're not showing a good example you're not going to be happy with what you see at the end of the day do you have anything to add um what i have to add is that i can say that sometimes when siblings um uh, report to their parents something that just happened between them it could actually be wrong what the sibling did to them right but when they report it they're not necessarily looking for let's say justice or whatever they're actually just looking for validation right to so that the parents back them in what they just uh, are feeling at the moment and they just want empathy from their parents um to, so that the parents can just like understand why they did this and so they cannot get in trouble right when they report their own side of the story you know what i mean oh, there's always their own side right you know they always always be lying about that stuff um, <laughs> I, I know from experience, anyways. That, that <laughs> so, was, so half the time you came to report, you went, you went, you went. Well, you know, I, not you, see, you see, you see, this, this is what I, I call a half truth. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it, it's not a lie per se, but you know, I just leave out certain few, few, few minuscule details just to like you know, spice up my own side of the story. You know? <laughs> make I'm yourself saying, look better. Yeah, make myself look like the hero in the in the, in the story, right? You know, oh, he, you know, he was just bothering me. I was just sitting down. I was doing nothing. He just came up to me, and then I just, I just had to defend myself. Like you know, I, I had no other choice. Like this guy was coming, coming up to me. He was attacking me. He was screaming and everything. I, I was like, oh, come on now. Like I just had to defend myself. Like, what am I? I'm supposed to sit down and die? Like come on, you know. That's that's how you, uh, that's how you explain things. Just yeah. to get the parents on your side, right? Mm -hmm. And. It also causes the, the rivalry to get worse, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if the parents do actually get on your side, mm -hmm. that is just going to be so bad for the other sibling. Because yeah. the other sibling is now going to hate the parents and the sibling. But since he has a lot of respect for his parents and, you know, he can't win a hand-to-hand -hand combat with his parents, he's going to take everything out on his sibling. Yeah. And that's how it's just going to, that's get just how worse. it's going to just get worse. Yeah. So this period that we're at home as parents, I think that we owe it to ourselves and our families, our kids, to sort of get into their minds, understand them, you know, find a way to really bond with them. This is a great time. I don't, I don't think we've ever had it like this, at least not in my time. We've never had a time where we couldn't go anywhere and we're just at home with the kids, literally homeschooling, doing everything, you know, Yes, it's not the best of situations, but we can make the best of it. And the best way to make the best of the situation is to really bond with the kids, you know, make them bond with themselves. Let them do things together, do, do fun things together. Let them cook together, bake together, you know, play together, do all sorts of really fun things together because these are memories that they're, they're creating memories and they're going to remember those things for the rest of their lives. I mean, I still remember things that I did with my sister. Sometimes we were on the phone, we were on the phone two days ago, and we were talking about some of the things we did growing up, and she was reminding me that we used to, um, we used to create these, um, like, dolls. I don't know, we created them out of all sorts of materials, and we would create, like, a groom and a bride. <laughs> like, they're getting married. We actually, like... Of stitch together clothes for them and all sorts of things. What? Like, you actually did. Oh, I didn't even know that. Like, you, you, didn't I will, even, I will you just, that. You know, I will, we, we, we had a good laugh, you know? So these, are th so these memories will be there forever, you know? We talk about when we used to 
bake together. I won't even have all the right ingredients. I will just find a way to, to share bake something. It won't come out great, but we'll be happy. We'll eat it, you know? So these are things that the kids will remember forever. So just find a way to make sure that you are bonding with them and they're bonding with themselves so that you can reduce sibling rivalry as much as possible and then make sure that they're not growing up being um having animosity towards themselves for long periods of time if you notice that they've had a quarrel or they have they've had a fight and it's going on for too long make sure you step in step in as the adult and and you know deal with it so that it, it, it doesn't go on for much longer because like i said i know adults who don't talk to themselves and they haven't spoken for like 10 years or 15 years and i'm like i don't understand my sister and i talk almost every day like how do you not talk to yourself for that long how do you go through life knowing not knowing that your sibling is fine you know so we need to make sure that as parents we don't fail these kids right so guys it's been amazing hanging with you guys again because do you have any last words yeah okay i just have to reiterate for all these people who are watching the video mm -hmm. do not fight with your siblings all right do not fight with them all right that's just it's just wrong don't do it okay but just, don't you do it yes. i mean yes yes i do it but you know i i i'm more um civil about it you know Preach I, don't, to yourself. I don't i don't fight hand to hand you know i not, just say it's things. not anymore yes not anymore because you've outgrown yes yes <laughs> yes but i do use my words um <laughs> if i did want to fight you would use your words yes, to fight. I, would, I would use my words to fight exactly. but at least you don't you don't you don't um take it too far it doesn't go on for long you you, you guys fight literally is like five ten minutes and then the next five minutes and then sometimes i i feel stupid because i've come into this fight i've you know i'm like stop it don't i don't want to hear it and the next five minutes they're giggling and laughing about something i'm like let me do myself last last i should have just <laughs> i should have just not even entered their matter at all you know what i mean so yeah so um stay safe guys we love you talk to you soon bye